I'm sure some of you guys get kind of irritated with me when I say, oh, that one's too big or, oh, that one's too little or whatever because it's just right for you. You know, I guess I would get irritated too if, you know, on your channel you were saying how much dark chocolate sucks and how you would never eat it and how awful it is when I know how delicious it is and how it's just heaven. Hello my friends, it's a late Boy Scout with what I would call an EDC knife philosophy video. A little bit of background. If you saw my Knives I Definitely Buy video, you might have heard me introduce a sort of concept that was fairly intuitive. A concept that I called EDC Plus and EDC. A way of dividing knife sizes up. It really is about my personal preference, what I choose, why I choose it. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Why do I choose either EDC Plus or EDC and virtually nothing above EDC Plus and not a whole lot below EDC? And how do I define EDC versus EDC Plus? Why do I define them as EDC and EDC Plus? These are things I didn't go over in the Knives I Definitely Buy video. Because some of you guys are going to look at this and go, man, that is totally different from the, my perspective. And please chime in in the comments section and tell me why you disagree and tell me what your philosophy is about knife sizes. But I'm sure some of you guys get kind of irritated with me when I say, oh, that one's too big or, oh, that one's too little or whatever because it's just right for you. You know, I guess I would get irritated too if, you know, on your channel you were saying how much dark chocolate sucks and how you would never eat it and how awful it is when I know how delicious it is and how it's just heaven. But, you know, I'm not going to get into that. If you want smaller or larger knives, dude, enjoy. Go for it. This is me describing why I choose what I choose. So what makes a folding knife an EDC folding knife? To me, an EDC folding knife is what fits in my pocket really, really comfortably. And I think I talked on this briefly in the Knives I Definitely Buy video. It's a knife that is great in pocket and good in hand. Whereas on the other side, the EDC Plus folders are great in hand and good in pocket. And I think that pretty much explains itself, but we'll go into it a little bit better. The EDC knives, again, they disappear in pocket. They feel great in there. If you don't take it out all day and use it, you don't feel bad about it, and you don't hardly remember that you had it because it fits in pocket so well. Not only does it fit really well in pocket, but it actually fits really nicely in your hand, too. It has a good grip. It has well thought out ergonomics, a nice handle to blade ratio. So you're going to be able to get a good amount of solid work done with the smaller EDC size folders. All the knives you see right here fit that definition. The ones on the left side of your screen right here, the EDC plus size folders, these knives will take up more space in your pocket, but they will also be much nicer in hand. The added size, the size of the handle, the size of the blade, means that you'll get better ergonomics from that knife. It will be less fatiguing to use that knife for long periods of time and also the additional size usually means additional strength so not only will you hold up for longer and harder work but the knife will hold up to longer and harder work. Now size and weight also enters into it of course but size can be deceiving because when we look at blade length for instance let's see here's the CRKT Ripple that is a three and a half inch blade almost. It's really close in length to Spyderco Tenacious. Very, very similar in length. So what makes this an EDC and this an EDC Plus? To me, it's the overall dimensions. Okay, not simply the weight, not simply the blade length or the handle length, but the overall dimensions of it. We do have a little more girth and handle right here by girth I mean from here to there than we have on this one. Uh, we also have, well, the handles are very close in size, but we also have a bit more width, you can tell. The uh, Tenacious being a little bit thicker than that Ripple. So in overall dimensions, the Ripple is an extremely carryable knife. It's very, very slim, just disappears into your pocket. The Tenacious, a little less so. Very carryable still, but a little less so than the Ripple. Another great side-to-side -side comparison would be the Benchmade Presidio Ultra. This is the full-size auto versus the Benchmade 
Mini Presidio, non-ultra, the 154CM versus the 440C. Now, these are obviously a full size and a mini size version of the same knife. Slight differences, I might talk about them when I get around to my review. But generally speaking, same knife, just different size. What makes this one the plus size and this one the EDC is again overall dimensions. Definitely a thinner knife here than this one. Handle length as you can see is pretty different. Blade length as you can see is pretty different. But it's the overall dimensions that make this one the EDC choice and this one the EDC plus choice. We can make the same comparison with the Spyderco Persistence and Spyderco Tenacious. Again, very similar blades, very similar handles. Actually, almost the same in width, I think. Now the Tenacious is a little bit wider. Overall dimensions make the Persistence easier to carry than the Tenacious. Not by a whole lot, but by enough that I put this squarely in EDC and this one squarely in EDC+. The Benchmade 943 is another excellent example of overall dimensions influencing what category it goes into for me. The 943 is an EDC blade, even though it's a three and a half inch blade at least. Um, it's very light, it's very thin. These dimensions right here, the girth is not very girthy. Not a lot of girth units on that one. It's, a, it's just a, a very good EDC sized folder. A little extra long, uh, by comparison to, let's say, oh, I don't know, how about the Spyderco Persian, or just the Persian 2, I never remember. But you can see that that one's a smaller knife, considerably smaller, in reach and in pocket, it's going to be considerably smaller. But I put them squarely in the same category because of overall dimensions and overall ease of carry. Now let's talk about when I would choose an EDC size knife there's the H&K Ascender, the Knife Rights Edition. I got from um, giving them a little donation. When would I choose an EDC size over an EDC Plus size? I'll tell you, almost always. Most of the knives that I have, most of the knives that I collect, here are a number of other ones. Most of the knives I buy are EDC sized knives. They just are. It's my favorite category of knife. I buy much, many more EDC size knives than I buy of any other size because I'll carry them. And again, this goes back to personal preference. It's what I enjoy carrying. It's the size I really like. So the real question is, when would I choose an EDC plus knife? EDC size knives get the job done in almost every situation that I find myself in. So when I decide to choose an EDC Plus knife is uh, fairly specific situations. And what those really come down to are situations where I want more capability than the lighter weight, smaller sized EDC knife can give me. Either more capability or a little more reach or just a situation where I want a slightly more intimidating knife. Now that's rare. I don't generally walk out of the house thinking, I'm going to need an intimidating knife today. It's not really my philosophy. It's not kind of how I look at folding knives. And that might be what influences why I choose the smaller ones. Um, in a nutshell, I don't really think of knives in a tactical sense. I think of them in a utility sense. So I don't typically think, you know, I'm going to need a larger knife to intimidate somebody or scare somebody away. But yeah, in the back of my mind, I think, well, I am going to be doing this, and I can't have my handgun for this reason or that reason. So maybe a larger knife could come in handy in a dire situation. In the back of my head, sure, I do think about that sometimes. But more often, these EDC plus size knives come into play and join my EDC when I just want a little more capability. Those situations might include hiking, camping, shooting, other outdoor activities, but also traveling. If I'm going someplace and can only bring a limited number of things with me, well, I would rather bring a large size knife to accomplish virtually any task that I find myself in 
while I'm traveling instead of a smaller size knife that might not cut it in a situation that I just didn't anticipate. When I feel like the larger knife, the better capability is something that I need, then I'll reach for an EDC plus sized knife. In virtually every other situation, EDC is gonna do it just great for me. If you were to ask 10 knife nuts what their perfect EDC size folder is, you'd probably get 10 completely different answers. And today, you've pretty much got my answer. EDC size knives are represented right over here. If you want the models, I'll try to put as many of them as possible down in the description. EDC plus size folders right over here. If you want the model numbers, I'll try to put as many of them down in the description as I can. Again, I classify any of these as EDC knives. But the EDC plus size knives have a more specific role when I really need something a little bit longer, a little bit stronger than the standard EDC, which again is what I go to almost every day. Call it knife philosophy or just call it knife porn. Either way, I'm the late Boy Scout and this has been a little bit of insight into how I choose my knives. We'll see you later.